What's up, YouTube? 606 Garage. Another weekend here at the shop. And here is Macy. Macy has come to say hi. She's such a good girl. I've had Macy for nine years. She was, uh, I actually watched her, watched, watched her come out of her mommy. I did. Sure did. She's been my buddy ever since. She's a good, that's right. She's a good shop dog. She don't bother anything. She comes in, says hi, and leaves. I mean, that's perfect. Um, got her parts in to complete this install on the carburetor. I got the, uh, I got my new radiator in that I ordered before I looked to see if I had a, another one. But whenever I'd bust this radiator, um, I just kind of got mad and ordered another one without even looking. Then I kind of got, well, I want to fix this thing. Got looking around. I had a brand new one already, which is fine. I've got plenty of cars that need radiators. Um, all right, moving forward. I'm going to get this carburetor on. Might do a little run down the road tomorrow, if possible. I've already got the car carburetor kind of tuned up a little bit. I just got to put these pieces on here. Uh, and really there's not a lot of tuning to these carburetors. Uh, they either work or they don't, you know, basically set your air idle screws at your RPM. I mean, that's pretty much it. I mean, other than that, you got to get in and change the meter and rods. Uh, there's, there's a, you know, there's a few adjustments on this thing. There's a few. So, but anyway. Uh, I can mess with accelerator pump, stuff like that. There's very little adjustments on these carburetors without having parts in hand. You have jets, you can do more adjusting. You have meter and rods and springs, you can do more adjusting. Uh, all right, let's get to it. I hope y'all enjoy it. All right, guys, and I did have this thing running. I just had this out zip tied to this and I hose from here to here. As you can see, this one is gonna allow me to drop it straight down. So I'll be able to tuck the fuel line in underneath here. And it's gonna grow up and hit this right here. Other than that, that's one thing I gotta do. Now, I did a real bonehead move. If you look down this carburetor, it looks like a carburetor. Well, here's what I did. This said this, uh, It almost looks like a barometric leaf type damper, and I guess that's what it is. Uh, maybe just the opposite. As it draws in, you know, the counterweights oh, keeps it from flying open. I did take this down the road. I did not use a draggy on it. I took it down the road, just in the driveway and back up. <clears throat> And man, when you rev this thing up, it's so quick. It's very responsive. But when you uh, go out there and put it to the floor, it doesn't run any better than that holly. If not, it might not run as good. Now, I got to thinking, I was like, maybe it's that, that those, you know, whatever you want to call them. I wish I'd have looked it up and got the correct name, but what this does, this thing has two jets in the back. One right here and one right here. When while it's closed, it comes out of the one closest back here. As it opens, it transfers to this jet. That right there is why it's a little, little sluggish. I believe, I believe. I'm gonna pull this thing off and I'm gonna put them back in there. I mean, it, and it's not a quick fix because you gotta take the top off you know, basically everything you gotta do, take it apart. Luckily, I don't have to take the, you know, the, the down leg boosters and stuff out of it, but all I gotta do is put this on, put that back in there. I had to clean the carburetor thoroughly. I put it on there and it would not idle less than 1200 RPM. So I was like, okay, we got an issue. Took it apart and there's about a quarter inch junk in the bottom of it. No big deal, you know, can of brake cleaner. Maybe two. Clean it up real good. 
I put it together and it'll idle all, all the way down to like 500 RPMs. She fixed. Now I set the idle at 700, but when you put it in gear, I'm sorry, I set the idle at 800, but when you put it in gear, it drops down to about 500 to 450 RPM. So I'm gonna bump it up a little bit, maybe to, you know, maybe a thousand RPMs on idle, 900, because it's a little, a little sluggish out of the hole. Um, yeah, let me get started on this thing, get these pieces on. All right, we'll do a little bit of video in here. Um, There's not a lot, uh, not a lot of things we can do here as far as, the only thing that I'm worried about is dropping one of these screws down this carburetor. Now, if I was smart, I'd take it off, but I never said I was a smart person. So I'm just gonna be kind of dumb about it and uh, be very careful about taking all this apart. Now this this particular radiator here doesn't have big grooves in it, so I won't lose my washers down in my fan shroud and bust it like I did last weekend. So I remember I was stressing over that because I had to go out of town. I just wasn't just wasn't very happy. Wasn't happy at all. Now I will say I, I did change the uh, there's an arm over on the choke that decides how much it allows the uh, when you pull the choke obviously it it adds to the throttle and then when you close the choke or I'm, I don't know how you'd say it you open the choke it throttles off if you close the choke it pushes the throttle out to give it more fuel to keep it running I put a shorter arm on it. I wasn't exactly sure what the deal was with it before. It came with the shorter arm and uh, that fixed that issue. So whenever I pull the choke, it throttles up as it should. So. All right, so here's <clears throat> one thing about doing this like this these metering rods sit on top of the the jets and let me tell you <clears throat> they sit down in the jets and be careful pulling these little springs off i lost one ruin your day all right so there is that one I gotta go take the one loose on the choke. All right, let me pull this off. And let me take the throttle return spring off. Okay, so that, that guy is right here. Just a sharp, small pick will work to pick those off. All right. Now, this gleam out there. As you can see, the metering rods. What I'll do when I put that back in, I'll take these caps loose and pull them out, set the carburetor on. I'll drop the metering rods and the springs back in there. And do what I need to do there. So, all right, so I'm gonna turn him upside down. All right, so if I remember, I gotta take this plate off right here, both of those, and drop that thing down back down in there. Now, I don't know that it matters, and it probably doesn't. I'm sure somebody's gonna tell me. But man, I put back everything 
exactly how I take it off. Unless I decide it doesn't need it, and then I just take, I don't put it back in there. And then hence, here I am putting it back in there. I'm gonna set him right there. We just drop this thing. Down in there, just like so. And it rocks, just like that. See that? That's how it whirls. There, let's set him right there. Set him right there. Now, I never remember that ever being there. Just goes to show how much attention I pay to things. So, that goes there. Lucky as a dog. That never happens. That means those metering rods fell right into place inside those jets. Uh, I think I did play the lottery. I, did, I played the lottery today. Actually, I'm not gonna put this on yet. I'm gonna leave this off. I'm gonna go ahead and drop the rest of these in place and start tightening them down. I will say this, anytime y'all make any modifications, try to remember what you did so you can always go undo it. And anytime you change any parts, don't throw your old ones away thinking I don't need those anymore because I've done it a hundred times and that's not an exaggeration by no means. It's probably giving myself some credit because then when you want to go use it on something completely different, guess what you need? The old part that you removed so you can modify your carburetor or whatever it is to fit the application at that time. Always save your old parts. I mean, honestly, I've got so many that I save now. I don't remember what half of them go to. That's the only downfall to it. But... It'll come to you. All right, three quarter inch wrench. Right. And that has got him loose. He's out. Now, now it's time to put this one in. This will clean it up, make it a little bit neater. I'm gonna pull that out. Make sure I didn't just pull the threads on that because it certainly Felt kind of weird there for a minute. Okay. No. Alright. That might work. Off. 
All right. It's always something, you know. Let's see if I can turn this around, but we may have a problem with the manual choke going, going on here. I may have to modify this bracket a little bit. Let's see if I can get this started. All right. I think it's gonna work. It's real close. It worked. Worked out fine. I get this started in there. Chokes on. Ugh. All right. So it's a good time. Um. I'm gonna put that on the first one. Because according to Uncle Tony's garage, that's a hot rod mode. That's kind of what we're after, right? That clip is in there, and she's secure. All right, now. That's him. And back there. And I got one more of these old fellers. Okay. That's it. I say that, put this throttle return spring on. Now this carburetor does not have the throttle kick down on it. I just kind of got it tucked in behind the choke or the choke arm that, uh, I'm sorry, this is hooked to the choke. As you uh, close the choke, it turns, forcing the throttle that way. There's like a cam gear on this thing. And there's adjustments on it as well. Um, <clears throat> now let's do what we're always supposed to do. Let's see here. Everything looks good there. Let's fire it up. Make sure there's no leaks. There should not be. But there never should be. Tell you what. <clears throat> I'm going to put this on an hour charge. I killed this battery the other day. And I just kinda, just give a little bit of juice to get it started. All right, we're back. I only charge it for about 10 minutes because I'm dying to see if it's gonna start.
I do not see or feel anything. Perfect. All right. That means she is ready for the breather. I'm gonna tell you, if you buy one of these round track breathers, they fit tight. And I can tell you this, I was uh, playing around with it and uh, I took this car out there and ran it. It ran better with the uh, air breather on it than without. Now, I do believe solely because of the base, the way it's contoured, because Chevrolet said that uh, if you look at some of their recessed bases, Chevrolet said that they made more horsepower and they ran better. Obviously, you take the breather off, but leave the base on it. And uh, I honestly feel that, that that is what it made a big difference to it. This is on here, carburetor's on here. We're gonna take this thing and run it, see how she does. And uh, when we get back, I, my plan was to put the, a manual rack under it this weekend. And I was waiting on inner tie rods. They were due here to be Thursday. It is Sunday and it still says due to be here Thursday. It hasn't really done anything. So I'm not sure what's going on there. But uh, unfortunately, I'm not going to get that manual rack on today because it's going to take, you know, a few hours to assemble it and get it all together and ready. And... Uh, but I want to put the, the manual steering on it and try it before I ever put the, the E7 heads on it. One, it's just that much more stuff I don't have to take off again because I do need a water pump. I, I definitely need a water pump. But that's also another reason I want to go ahead and get the manual steering on it. I can buy a shorter belt and run it the way I've got it now, minus this. Um, she's actually starting to, to come around. She's starting to wake up and she's starting to act like something. I like it. And I really hope this Edelbrock is a keeper, but if it's not, we can always do something different. Well guys, that's it for today. Got her back together. Um, we'll take a quick trip, probably in the morning. Weather's supposed to be decent. Um, We'll see what she does, and I'll keep you posted. So, guys, thank you. Like and subscribe. And uh, comment, please, if you want to. Say whatever you got to say, whatever you want to say. And, I mean, I'm usually not too rough with anybody. I don't really beat anybody up, and their opinions are nothing like that. I appreciate the same. But if you do have some uh, constructive criticism or just some ideas, you know, because... I'm trying to find like the low buck ideas, the fixes and stuff. And, you know, I mentioned the manual rack. Uh, I'm putting together a video on how I converted a power steering rack to a manual rack. Now, luckily, I didn't go ahead and assemble this thing because I ain't got the inner tire rod in. But, I almost made a mistake. And I was just sitting there. I was driving today and just thought about something. You'll see what I'm talking about. And I'll mention it in the video. But, uh. Always think everything over that you're going to do before you mess up. I would have been in serious trouble if something would have went wrong if I would not remembered something. So, like and subscribe. Have a good weekend, fellas. Ladies. Morning, guys. Girls. Follow up. We went for a quick little test drive. I went from a, uh, whatever ran last time, 1570 something to a, uh, 1569 first pass no tuning no nothing and that's going from the holly to the edelbrock that's uh i'm pretty happy with that i noticed it's missing a little bit and i got back and i noticed uh number eight plug wire was i could see two ribs on the spark plug snapped it back on number six plug wire i seen one rib 
had to push it back on. I'm going to wait till church is over because there's a church probably, I don't know, a few hundred yards away. And the car isn't that loud or nothing, but, you know, I thought it was actually closer to 12, but it's, it's 11. So let's let them get done with church. We'll give another run. All right. Run number two. Fix the two plug wires, didn't touch the carburetor, no nothing. Now, I looked it up. It went a 1579 with the intake. When I just put the intake back on after I ported it. You know, and it went from a 1602 to a 1579 with the ported intake. When I put the Edelbrock on here, it went from a 1579 to the first pass was a 1569, but I found I, had, I I could tell it was missing whenever I you know drove around the block to get staged up, and when I come back, you know it ran a 1569. I fixed the two plug wires, so waited till after church, went back out there, went a 1556. So we from the Holly to the Edelbrock, <clears throat> we went from a 1579. To a 1556 now two apples and oranges apples and oranges this is a mechanical secondary carburetor designed to run the other one that's on it was not i understand that i mean i've got a 600 650 double pumper i can throw it on there and see what it does but i really think it's too much uh carburetor for this car so now when I get the E7 heads on here, and when, when I put the E7 heads, I'm putting this ported intake back on it because it works pretty good. When I put the E7 heads on here, then get to the roller cam, um, I will try the double pumper. I think I know it'll handle it then. So because by then I'm gonna have a little bit lower gears and uh, and a five speed. So that's the follow-up, 1556. I couldn't be happier. Uh, we are this close to the 14s. And, you know, really a 14-second car is it's still a decent street car. Uh, it's a fun street car. But, um, but we're going for the 12s. We're going for the 12s. And after running today and seeing how much response it was with these garbage parts that's on this motor... 12s is easy. It's almost giving me uh give me a hankering for the 11s. We'll see what we can do. But I can tell you this. We're going to take it as far as we can. I got an email, Alex Springs. My springs are shipped due to be arrived Tuesday. I can finish the E7 heads that I'm porting, which I still got probably 20 or 30 hours worth of grinding to do on this thing. Then I get to take them to the machine shop, have them surfaced. Then I will reinstall the valves, valve springs, and I will, uh, I'm probably going to, when I put those uh, heads on there, it's either going to get a torque or two with the carburetor kind of twisted, either a, a that or a wind accelerator intake, which is basically the same intake, but it's straight, and I have a Chinese Victor Jinger knockoff. Uh... You know what the hell, let's try them all three. Guys, have a great day. Like and subscribe, comment, give me some ideas. Thanks, fellas and ladies.